Welcome to the Weekly Roof Podcast, episode number 21. Today we'll be discussing Kaguya Summer, Sean's suggestion from last year on this day of Valentine's Day on in the year 2021. It won't be Valentine's Day when you're watching this, I hope. If it's a year later and it's Valentine's Day, that's going to be concerning. Slightly, um, but it's 2021 Valentine's Day right now. Uh, it's very thematically appropriate, given that Sean picked this and we just happened to pull it out on February 14th. Six months since our last pod. We are very hardworking individuals, we promise. Uh, and um, how, how have you... Is, Pete is... I'm no, you, no, 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 no. Sean does all the editing. <laughs> Matt, so have you been in the last however long, man? We moved out of the same house. Our last pod, we were in the same room. Now we're not. Now we're using Discord. Yeah, it's um, big changes. We talked about it briefly. We, uh, I moved out from where we were living. I was living with Pete, so... And that kind of caused a lot of delays with episodes because there's probably be, there's definitely been a dry streak when nothing was uploaded because we were figuring everything out. But... Hopefully things will be more consistent by the time this is up and running and Should be fine. we can only hope. In terms of what I've been doing now, I honestly can't even fucking remember because it's been half a year. I don't even, I barely remember anything that I've bloody watched when did we or last played. Before the last point? It was not like November last year or something. Like yeah. Months. Well, it was the, um, what's it fucking called? Fucking, um, Peaky Blinders episode. So, uh, yeah. Wow. That seems yeah. like a long time ago. Yeah, it was a Dude. long while ago. It won't, say, it won't feel like a while ago for the viewers if they're listening, because Peaky <laughs> Blinders would have been out two weeks ago, hopefully. But, yeah. <laughs> there is a massive gap, and as you can probably tell, there's going to be a big gap in audio quality as well, because my mic is going to be fucking terrible for the, like, the next 10 parts. It's going to be fine. Don't even worry about it, man. We'll get you a mic. that, I've been playing a lot of Street Fighter and Guilty Gear. That's they, Those are definitely the games I've been playing the, the most since the last time I left. Just I feel like a drug dealer at this point. Yeah, yeah, you just sent me down this fucking fighting game hole. I've been playing Guilty I got Guilty Gear like a month ago, and my friend was saying like two weeks after that I already had 50 hours in the game, and I was like, that's interesting. I don't want to, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to admit that I have a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun, though. Guilty Gear is a lot of fun, evident from me playing a multiplayer, like a fighting game for 50 hours, because I wouldn't play games that I don't enjoy for that long. <laughs> Get some time to fair, man. And when's when like, are you playing online against like random scrubs and shit? There's not too many ranked matches from what I can see, like in terms of people playing or anything. I need I do want to play it. I do want to play ranked matches though. Strive is coming out soon, like the sequel or like a new Guilty Gear game, and it's gonna have an open beta. I think a few of my friends are gonna test it out the weekend that it's free or something. Yeah. That's basically been me. I'm just fucking becoming more and more of a degenerate with fighting games. And I think my PS4 menu is just lined up with fighting games right now. It's got like Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom. I think Skullgirls is there because I recently downloaded that because the DLC character getting announced. And then, um, and then yeah, at the top is always Guilty <laughs> Gear. That's amazing, dude. That's absolutely amazing. It's, I've got a problem. Yeah, no, it's just, <laughs> you, don't a problem. you don't have a problem. You have a hobby. That's amazing. Yeah. In terms of in terms of shows I've been watching as well, I've been I haven't been watching much. Just not too much interesting anime airing right now. Attack on Titan season four is airing, which is awesome. But um, yeah. yeah, no, Attack on Titan is great. It's going to be ending soon. The manga as well, and it looks like it's going to be fucking brilliant as well. So would highly recommend that. But if anyone's watching this and watch Attack on Titan, I'd honestly kind of be surprised because everyone's watching Attack on Titan. And if they're an anime fan now, it seems <laughs> really I-, I haven't touched it since season one, bro. Yeah, no, uh, a lot of people come back. Apparently, they're planning on finishing up the anime um soon. Yeah, no, they, they will be finishing soon, I imagine. The manga's like got two more chapters left, so Oh damn. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be ending soon, but I would highly recommend it if you haven't watched it. A lot of people I would... are gonna be really, really happy or really, really sad about the ending too. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I think a lot more people are expecting it to be good though than it is people expecting it to be bad. A lot of them fans that I've been seeing that are reading the manga say that they have high hopes for the ending, and I have high hopes for the ending as well. I think it's been quite fantastic. It is a classic in the making. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Like, one of the big, big classics. Yeah. We've also both been watching Jujutsu Kaisen, haven't we, actually? That's another one that I've been watching. I plugged away. I like, knocked out three or four or five episodes, but um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying that as well. It's just fun. It's just dumb fun. I, I really like love Shonen as a general rule, and this is just perfect over the top sort of stuff. I need to get back into it. I haven't really been touching it too much lately. Um, I've been throwing That's most good. of my life away on Cyberpunk, man. I, I have a lot of opinions and I have a lot of stuff to say about that game. Uh, that's kind of counter to the narrative, I suppose. A lot of people are talking about how Cyberpunk is this garbage tier game. It was released too early. All this other crap about it. And I have a lot to say in support of the game, support of the devs. I think that it's hilarious that a corporate game, like a game run by corporate suits, 
and the entire story is about against corporate suits. The corporates were the ones who fucked it over in the first place. Uh, there's a certain amount of irony going on there that I find really funny, but also super sad because people were saying, yeah, no, CD Projekt Red's stock has dropped and now they've been like ransomed by hackers. So a whole bunch of hackers like hacked into their systems, copied all their stuff and said, we're going to start releasing your crap on the internet uh, as open source. Software. Yeah, I saw yeah. that one. That one. Yeah, dude, it's rough. It's like either people people are sort of already saying, nah, this is just, you know, CD Projekt Red that is like releasing their own crap to try and, you know, gain more sympathy points. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know, man. Like, they're a small studio, really. Like, they're not huge. They're new. They're new on the block. They're not like, you know, they're not a naughty dog. They're not a, um, you know, they're not an EA or a, um, you know, Respawn Entertainment even. Or they're not a, a anything like that. They're not Ubisoft. You know, they're, they're sort of, <laughs> these guys who ended up like being a hit to smash hit with The Witcher 3. And then after that, everything sort of went to pieces for him because Cyberpunk was just so rushed. Yeah. You know, 14 hour, like seven day crunch weeks and shit. It was insanity. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it now because this is a podcast about an anime. It's our podcast. We talk about what we want. I know. I could, no, dude, I, I could go on about Cyberpunk for a while. I, I might even just do an entire rant pod about it. Um, Maybe. After you play it. But like. I was um, Sorry, there was something else I actually wanted to mention I played because I think we talked about it briefly once or something, but I still kind of want to talk about it because I think it was great. I actually played the first Mafia game recently. Like, I got the HD collection for the three of them. Yeah, and I think the first game's fucking great. I I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fucking fun, and I would heavily recommend that as well, if you, especially if you like mafia films or kind of just crime films in general. It's really fucking charming, in my opinion. That would not would not have picked you as a guy. I mean, I guess you like open world sort of. I've always I always wanted to play him because people kept telling me that the second game has a fantastic story, and I'm halfway through the second game now. And the, the second game, the HD version of it at least, is riddled with bugs. Holy fuck! But it's still an entertaining <laughs> story. Yeah. But um, the first one's great though. Like in terms of a port, like a HD remaster as well, it feels pretty smooth. And like, I didn't encounter many bugs. I think I encountered a few minor ones, but genuinely, just a great experience overall, in my opinion. Awesome. What makes it good? It's just fun. Like, just, like it's uh, it's satisfying to drive around in that game for as well. And I don't like driving around in games as well. But the driving's actually kind of fun to do. Like, it's fun to have car chases, except when you're doing the fucking racetrack mission, which I'm pretty sure anyone who's played Mafia knows what I'm talking about. But um. The characters there as well are just super charming and likable. It's got this kind of like super obvious mimicking style of mafia movies, but in my opinion, it's it works super well because it just comes off as like really charming and the characters are endearing as hell. And yeah, it's just really, really fun. Very, very simple story in my opinion, but just told really, really well and just great. Great overall. I, I went into that trilogy thinking I'd only like the second one really, but I genuinely enjoyed the first one a lot. Cool, man. Cool. We should do a pot on it. We should. Um, we should, sort we should. It's. Like, yeah. It'd be worth it. There's a lot to talk about there. It's a great game. But now we can talk about a great anime. We can absolutely. We can talk. That was a very smooth segue, and now to introduce us. <laughs> That's uh, what I'm here for. Well. Have a sponsor. <laughs> I'm lying. Uh, no one knows that this podcast exists except the people. That's how to stay. Yay! Who would who would be our first sponsor? Actually, that's why we're talking shit. No one. No one. Rage Shadow. <laughs> If they said to me, I'll pay you $4,000 to mention this in a pod, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would make the most passive, aggressive, sarcastic, unlike, unflattering ad ever. And I'll just be super over, like, overhyped, just really like sending it, like just drop, you know. Like, and you first, folks. Pizza sell out. I'm, I'm the only <laughs> one loyal one here. <laughs> in five uh, years, when we come crashing down because Pete sold out and turned into a company, remember that I said I warned you all here. I'm the only true member. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one with standards and actual integrity. Yeah, I'm sure. the only one too lazy to actually make an ad and get, get money. Yeah, the real question is, would you like actually like to do this as a job? Could you imagine doing this for employment? God no. <laughs> It's too inconsistent. <laughs> no, but if we like, if we were getting paid for it, we get uber consistent, uber fast. Oh, they got paid for it, I'm sure. Yeah, it's like, like, a job, bro. Literally, you get employed, and then like we just do this like twice a week. If someone employed me to talk in a microphone for like ten hours a day. I'd feel like, all right, interesting, buddy. I'll take your no. money. I'll scam you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll run that. Okay, Kagusawa. Let's do it. Jeez. So. All right. Your, this is your recommendation, so you can bring me. Uh, you can bring up the first points, mate. What are we? What are we talking about? Yeah, I will I'll first introduce it. Kaguya Sama, for those is unaware, and first and foremost, I would say watch it, or because it is absolutely a blast to watch, and it is worth the it is worth the time. But if you aren't interested and want to just listen to us talk about it, that's good as well. But I would heavily recommend watching or reading it. But um, Kaguya Sama is a 
rom-com manga turned rom-com anime, which is about a student council in a very prestigious school, and it's about the two the heads of the council, the student, the vice president, and the president. And it's about them just trying to get each other to confess their love to each other. And it's immensely, it's fucking hilarious, in my opinion, first and foremost. It is probably the fucking most I've laughed watching a rom-com in a very, very long time. It is hilarious. I'm going to add in a set period for me. Like, this is the funniest shit, like rom-com I've ever seen in my life. It is also, in my opinion, just very heartfelt as well and very like genuine and also really good at like with its characters like it is not just for the laughs it is a genuinely great story and i will make the claim that in my opinion it is my favorite manga i ever read i think the manga is absolute perfection and that there's very minimal wrong with it that i would take points off of it for and the anime is just as great which stuns me because i would always think that the manga was never really adaptable because of the way it's structured which i might talk about later unless i forget but it stuns me that the anime is just as good as it is because the anime manages to replicate the feelings I have while reading it, and it's genuinely just perfect. But um, before we actually talk about Kaguya Summer, Pete, what is your experience with rom-coms in general? Uh, there's something that you kind of have to tolerate when you have a girlfriend, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, depending on the girlfriend, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it like that, but, like, a lot of... Uh, no, that's actually just... Let's not get into that fucking can of worms. Um, no, there's something like, you know, people watch them, and they're sometimes fun, but for the most part, I, I've just never found romantic comedies to be, like, particularly grab me. I always think that the main protagonist of the dude is just a fucking loser who's, like, it's a whole kind of underdog, uh, nice guy, dog of nice guy type vibe. Um, and women are, and women obviously have a lot of power in this type of thing, but also they've got a whole bunch of really bitch friends, and it's just, I don't know, I just don't like it. I don't like it a lot for the most part. I think that, um, the way that it's set up as well, like structurally speaking, <clears throat> a rom com is always designed to play off this idea that these two people are into each other, but it, they need to stretch it out and need to add like the most ridiculous kind of overblown shit in the way to stretch out the narrative and stretch out the drama. Now, Kaguya Sama does this, but. It does it well, in my opinion. We'll get into that in a in a few. Yeah, I think that for my most part, it just it's it's really cringe humor as well. I think a, a large part of why I don't like romantic comedies is because people just have these kinds of conversations and do these kinds of dumb shit, and it makes my balls want to retract into my throat than jump out of my mouth. To be honest, like it's just like really uncomfortable. Like you're just a fucking idiot. There's no like it's the way it's played up and the sort of how seriously it's taken and, and, and it just I really don't like the way it feels. I really don't like the way it makes me feel. For the most, I'll be the first guy to tell you I'm not a rom com dude at all. I have and will probably continue to tolerate them like maybe once every two years. But aside from that, no, God no. Interesting. I, on the other hand, will have watched a lot of rom coms in my life, and this really? is when I was young and when I'm older, which will always surprise people, which fi- I find immensely hilarious because definitely surprised me, man. People never expect me to be the guy that's actually watched a lot of rom-coms. And when I say I've watched a lot of rom-coms, I don't just mean anime, like rom-coms either. I've genuinely watched a lot of live-action ones when I was younger, because my mum would always watch them, so I'd watch them with her. And even after that, I've occasionally watched them as well. And I find them to be entertaining at times, because for the most part, what Pete said is that it's completely accurate. They're entirely fucking dumb. Like, a lot of them are really stupid, and I just, I found them pretty amusing to watch for the most part. There are some that I think are actually kind of actually funny, but I think the classics that every guy says is Mean Girls, which I'll actually sh- I'll shout out as well. Mean Girls is actually pretty fucking funny. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. So what, is, that, is that is that a later is that a later lineup? Not just Tori. Yeah, later. maybe maybe I will recommend. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 that'd be an interesting episode. I don't know how much I could talk about that. Lindsay Lohan discuss and let's be like here. Yeah, just- I'll, I'll be so pissed if you I would, yeah. I watched that movie a lot as a kid, actually. Like, my mom would always watch it. So, I, my mom, whatever my mom, my mom put on would be what I always watch as well. She put on Jaws a lot, and that scared me as a kid. So, you know, it wasn't always good, but. <laughs> well, so now you're addicted to horror, horror films. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm noticing a pattern here. I really. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe there is a pattern. But, um,. When I started getting into anime, it definitely incre- the rom coms I consume definitely increased by a thousand because there's a lot of rom com animes to watch. In my opinion, a lot of rom com animes have the same problem as well, where it's suffering from lack of character development for a very long time, and then over a while, after a while, it eventually gets old or like there's no, it doesn't feel like there's any development or the characters are moving anywhere. And for the most part, they're not always terribly funny. I think rom coms in anime are somewhat funny, and I think that's partly just because the visual medium lets it have some more kind of funny gags with its actual work, whereas with a live-action rom-com, you can't really fucking rely on 
quirky facial expressions to make it to make a laugh really or maybe i'm just a degenerate a latest weeb so you know yeah but you said your set pieces are also um shitty like as in not that shitty but it's not the same like there's yeah. there something to be said about set pieces framing particular situations uh and also the japanese is, is interesting in that like we'll get into this in a bit but they have radically different sort of social norms to us as well so yes that is something that is is interesting it's, it's very well explored in this show but yeah for the most part i would say that japanese rom-coms just to add to your point uh do have a they have a different social sort of structure and as a result they're kind of more hilarious if you get where they're coming from but yeah um that's my experience of rom-coms basically i've watched a lot so when i say that i think kaguya is the best of them i feel like i have somewhat of an idea of what is qualifying as the best rom-com and gen- genuinely, I think Kaguya is just a fucking blast to watch, but I also just love it. I've, I don't think I've ever spent... I don't think I've ever been going back and forth between being sad and happy as much as I have with Kaguya Summer with the fucking oh, ripple that it gives me. I, that is a vibe. But yeah, so Kaguya Summer, what what were your general thoughts on it, Pete? Uh, even though we've already... Yeah, I was really tough to get into initially, man. Um, The first couple episodes were absolutely amazing, and I... I found it funny, but it was very much a mood thing for me, which is probably why we haven't gotten this done uh, any earlier than we did. But I found it really difficult to appreciate at some points until I just sat down and sort of made myself get into it. I think that, um, and that's not to say it's bad at all, but it is a mood thing. I'm, as I said before, I am a caveman when it comes to my entertainment. I like lots of explosions and fight scenes and everything. Uh, getting into this was, it was tricky. It was tricky. It was, it was really difficult i'm not even i have no idea about sort of romance arcs inside of manga unless they're framed in some kind of world where there's a lot of fighting and other stuff going on uh purely romantic comedies or romance generally inside of manga and anime i am very light on i don't understand uh, a lot of that stuff i don't watch it i don't really know anything about it so this is a completely fresh kind of foray into a radically different genre of anime that i've never really experienced before but in <clears throat> short, like short bursts, I think that there's so much to be said for the comedy. Like, and I actually need to emphasize this. The comedy of this show is fantastic. And we'll get into why it's funny. I think the comedy is genuinely amazing. I think the romance genuinely made me want to cry at some points. Like the, the, There were points in that show where I was trying to fight back tears. I'm just sitting here in front of my computer like eating KFC and trying not to cry over this like, anime, and, uh, this anime that I'm watching. It was ridiculous, but legitimately just really, really emotionally touching. And less than like, not just emotionally touching, it's also just there's moments in it which are fucking adorable. It just makes you want to, you know, cuddle a kitten. It's like that. It's got that kind of energy to it. Fucking adorable. Art style is fantastic. Music is great. And honestly, I think the thing that carries the entire thing for me is the announcer. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the narrator, yeah. The, the, the narrator is my favorite, pro- one of my favorite parts of the entire thing. Uh, because he's like a battle announcer sort of calling UFC fights. He's like Japanese Joe Rogan uh, calling a fight between these two high school kids who are trying to get each other to confess first. It's fucking hilarious. I absolutely love it. And that that is, for me, one of the best parts of the entire show, I think. The narrator definitely does fucking enhance the comedy by like a thousand. Like in the manga, it's funny enough, like just reading it. But the, narr- the fucking way, the energy he puts into it just fucking enhances the comedy so much yeah that's the same guy i swear that is the same guy who's the narrator in my hero academia or some shit like i swear that's him it must be i don't think it would be i don't think it's the same narrator at all i'm pretty sure i know who the narrator from my hero academy would be but i I don't believe it would be the same narrator okay i I could have sworn i could have sworn it was him it sounds like one of those guys though for like a crazy over the top (laughs) a crazy over the top uh, shonen anime that's what that guy sounds like. It's amazing. Yeah, no, he's he's, he's fucking great. Uh, but those, that's my initial thoughts, man. So art direction, fantastic. Uh, framing device is great. Characters are fantastic. Like the dialogue is awesome. The entire concept is great. The comedy is hilarious and generally heartfelt, touching. Really makes you feel things. I really like a lot of that. So yeah, that's my initial impressions. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad that you enjoyed it a lot, honestly. Like I, like I said, this is genuinely one of my favorites, so knowing that you actually did enjoy it a lot, it weren't like your caveman snobbish self and was like, oh, no explosions is actually nice to hear. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you could, glad you could get up, get past the lack of explosions for a bit. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but yes. I no, I, I know I'm joking. I'm exaggerating as well. But I think personally, just in my opinion, what makes it 
like just the best for me is genuinely just the character interactions and how well they interact with each other because i'm way more focused on i'm going to be way more focused on like the story aspects and like the thematic purposes of it all and that but i still think the comedy is great and i think in terms of comedy the narrative is fucking hilarious but something that i really appreciate about this is that the characters do feel like friends in a lot of ways and like they actually do like work off of each other really well and how they interact with each other feels incredibly genuine in my opinion as well Mm-hmm. there's something that um i always love to talk about with the series where it's like one of my favorite dynamics in that series isn't even like kaguya and shirigane who are its two main characters because we haven't actually said it like yet but one of my favorite interactions in that series is always between kaguya and ishigami who's like the senpai kaguya is the senpai and um, ishigami is the kohai because yeah. i love how genuine they actually like become good friends over time where it starts with ishigami being terrified of kaguya <laughs> and thinking that she wants to fucking kill him but then by the second season they're actually really really good friends and even after that as well in the manga they just continuously be like being good friends and supportive with each other and it's genuinely amazing to see that kind of growth miko gets a lot of growth as well who comes into season two with in terms of who she interacts with and all that and i think it's just how do you say her name miko i that's how i say it. i don't fucking think i'm saying her right <laughs> Eno or ilno or something oh Eno is her first name like, ooh, like oh uh, yeah Okay, 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 okay. Miko, you know, yeah. but yeah um i think the the characters are fucking completely nailed in that regard and i i genuinely think it's one of the best cast of characters i've seen in a very long time it's like similar to the boys where all the characters i enjoy a lot but i wouldn't say i like all of them because i fucking hate chica with a passion but i think she's fucking hilarious and works well for the comedy aspects i just don't like her as a person <laughs> but i think that's kind of intentional in a lot of ways pink, pink hair girl yeah 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 the airhead um, girl what's, what do they call her again um, Fujiwara, I think, is Fujiwara. what they refer to her as, yeah. Yeah, Fujiwara, gotcha. But first, Chico. Yeah, it's Chico, yeah. That's what everyone in the fucking community refers to her as, but yeah. Oh, I don't know my last name's men, like, uh, Shir- Shirogane, Kaguya, yeah, Fujiwara, and Ishigami. Yeah, it's, um... He'll know, he know. I mean, Kaguya is her first name, to be fair. Okay. <laughs> well, that's yeah. it. That's like another thing as well that's really great about it as well is how they like they all re- like because obviously with Japan referring to each other, I'm pretty sure you've been through like with like people you're close to, you're only meant to really call like you only call people by their first names if you're really close to them. Yeah. So a lot of how the characters refer to each other is conveyed in terms of their closeness as well. I think there's a whole episode on Kage wanting to call Shirigane Miyuki, but she doesn't end up doing that. Which no, she can't do it. So she yeah, she can't, can't. run for president again purely so she doesn't have to refer to him as anything except president. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, also, to, like, actually keep... like, I can't possibly call him by his first name. Just thinking also to actually like keep being around him as well. Partly, I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's, not just, it's not just the first name. No, it's, it's, that, it's, still, it's still funny in that. that yeah, is one of the primary motivations to the entire thing. Yeah, no, I, I I love the characters, and I think. In terms of the cast as well, the one that stands out the most for me is definitely Shirogane's character, and that stands out more in the manga as well, but I genuinely adore how he interacts with the rest of the cast and how supportive he is towards the rest of the cast as well, also how much of a fucking absolute dork he is at times as well, but... I think, um, yeah, but yeah, like, what do, what do you, what are your thoughts on the characters? We're trying to talk about the characters now, I guess. And cause... yeah, moving into character stuff, dude. I think that you are Ishigami sometimes. That that, that really is a vibe. Yeah, that's fair. Like, that's when, um... I, when, I, when I looked at like Ishigami, no, not in terms of everything else, but just like the guy sort of chilling in the corner doing his own thing, and then just immediately goes, "Well, this is fucked." I just I'm gonna go, guess I'm gonna go hang myself. Like that is. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it does remind me of you. Uh, even I'm the long hair and the kind of like just a bit sort of in and out like but he literally hits the fuck it i'm ahead type i'm a head out type of shit like honestly anytime he gets out of his control it's just like this person's intimidating me on the phone i'm not even intimidating it's like this is too uncomfortable i'm not getting involved i'm out of here that does smell like you and also like mad gamer boy and he knows all his manga hardcore like i love that part where he gets everyone addicted to that like shoujo fucking manga yeah and the entire next episode is like shot t- totally in the like oh that's and then, he becomes, hilarious. and then he becomes like this you know dark haired pretty boy and he's like got all the sparkles and shit. yeah <laughs> fucking hilarious even, like but dude honestly just to plug you a bit more like that whole that whole episode where he's um he beats the fuck out of that guy and he's done the entire thing purely to like preserve the honor and to make sure nothing's happened and he's just tanking all this dumb bullshit uh, from everybody purely to just go look this is this is how it is i don't really give a fuck about it and then like you know shiragane comes out of nowhere and there's a really touching moment where he tries to pull him out and says 
you know, fuck that apology. Let's just get out of here and let's hang out with us, that kind of shit. And then he sort of comes into the student council. That's fantastic. And in a lot of yeah. ways, I feel like you would be the kind of guy who would beat the guy's fucking head in and then just say nothing about it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just saying, you, you do have that kind of vibe. And I really genuinely enjoy Ishigami a lot. I think he's one of my... Yeah, no, Ishigami is fantastic. I have... It's the his his backstory episode where all that is revealed has never failed to make me cry whenever I watch it. It is genuinely yeah. a fantastic episode, and I think his character is genuinely well explored. I think one of my favorite things about that is how they don't in, they don't encourage that what Ishigami did was good or bad. They acknowledge like Jerry Gane acknowledges that and says there's definitely ways he could have gone around there and made it better. Yeah. But the whole thing is about just what he how like what he did and how kind of unfair it was to him as well to have to write that apology and more focusing on that yeah. and in terms of like just shooting on it actually helping him out of this rot that he is in just and it's, also, it's good uh, development for Ishigami and it also just genuinely shows how like caring Shirigane is as well and I, I I I love I love everything about that that's that's like basically a moment in the manga where I just fucking fell in love with the series and just complain from there it's just being all up in my opinion also, just the other thing of don't give a fuck what anyone thinks of you type thing. Like he's just sort of he's he's aware and uh, and just wise to the fact that everyone fucking hates him. Everyone thinks he's a freak. Mm. And kind of keeps chipping on regardless. Uh, and we don't yeah. find out any of this stuff until like tail end of the second season, right? Like for me, yeah, I, you don't you don't find out. You don't know anything about this. You just think he's kind of like this weird, not not weird. I shouldn't say weird. He's this introverted sort of socially awkward dude who's hanging out and he knows a lot of nerd shit and I feel in a lot of ways he kind of is an audience surrogate as well. I think his popularity is definitely tied into the fact that he is very relatable for a lot of the audience. I think that is intentional in a lot of ways as well. Absolutely. And it's just kind of how would you interact with all this insanity. But he has his own character arc. He has his own shit that he's done that he's not proud of. Um, so this is, I'm only talking about Ishigami here, but in all honesty, he really, she really strikes me as an amazing character. I really like yeah. Shiragani as well. Obviously, I like the main character. I like all of them, man. Um, yeah, I really like uh, uh, Miko. In that, like, Miko, yeah. she's basically that, like, in that meme with that, that that dog with the bat, just saying like, "smack, go to horny jail." That is her. <laughs> that is her entire process in that. Moment. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of like the that meme in like the Reddit or something. I feel yeah, like I'm I've sure seen that a lot. <laughs> that is her. She's just literally the go to horny jail bat. That is her. Um, yeah constantly fucking with people and doing all that sort of stuff. Miko's um, great. And then another character which I feel is incredibly underrated. Um, so after me, you know, you, you talk about Miko a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, Miko's great because I, I, I always feel bad about the character though because when she first came in, I found her very annoying at points, but she, in the manga, she's definitely grown on me a lot and coming back to the anime, I'm like, no, I definitely appreciate where her character is and what she go, what she means as well. And yeah, I think, I think what you said is very accurate. She's definitely the kind of stern, serious kind of student council member. Yeah, she wants them all to go by rules, but she's also very young and impressionable compared to the others because she always fucking misunderstands everything and is there's there's a lot of bits of me- memes about it later on about how she could easily just run sway the wrong way if someone actually tried or something, but they they always have to defend her. Like Ishigami always comes in and stops her before she fucking does something stupid because she's too easily impressionable. It's really yeah, funny. That's I think how she believes that like, Kaguya is this sort of dominatrix tied up and like smacking people with whips. And oh, shit. it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like you read, read 50 Shades of Grey once as an impressionable school child and that is it. Like, <laughs> like, any kind of strong female personality. Fucking love it. I, that's so funny. And she's sitting there talking to that random the, the girl. I don't know what her name is with the round glasses just sort of sitting there super quiet. And supporting oh, her. yeah. I can't remember how to say her name. Um, it's like Obernagi or something. I, I, I'm I sorry to all the fans that are screaming at me right now. That's being like, oh, you're a fake fan. Another one of my favorite characters, man. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just going to give him a quick dip and we might move on because we're going to get into the main ones and how they all interact. I think that going through each character individually is kind of whatever because we'll be here all day. Uh, the yeah. mate. The mate? Um, is that the guy I, that goes... No, 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 no. The, the Kagi is some... Kagi is made. What's her name? Oh, the, the maid. Yeah. Hayasaka. Hayasaka. Yeah, dude, she is one of my favorite characters. She's the only person who's actually not cooking with stupid juice the entire way through the entire she's, thing. Yeah, she's definitely she's definitely a straight man to fucking Kaguya's comedy. That's perfect, dude. That's, you need like, in a show like this, you really need a straight man. The fact that she's a ninja and <laughs> a master of disguise and like the most capable person humanly possible in that entire show. She's switched on. She knows what's going on, and she just kind of has to tolerate everything Kaguya is doing. Uh, that entire episode where she's in the bath and like trying to just unwind, relax, yeah. and then Kaguya keeps running and saying, "I need you to help me with my Twitter." It's just, <laughs> dude, 
I just yeah. feel so bad for him, man. It's like, can you just let the girl have a bit of a soak? Like, is it that fucking hard? Compl- yeah. Kaku is useless without a man. Absolutely useless. <sighs> Yeah, Haya Saka is fucking hilarious and, and great as well. She's a fan favorite and it, for a good reason. She's genuinely, it's fun to watch her actually fucking beat a straight man to the comedy. Like I said, she's the only one, like you said as well, she's the only one that doesn't fucking fall into the bullshit fucking endless spiral that the other characters fall into. And Nami she's does sometimes as well. That's because he's kind of got a bit of meta knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and yeah, and and obviously, I think a lot of the popularity is the fucking whole like based off of the whole higher suckers suffering like constantly thing, and just be like, please let her have just let, leave her alone for a Every bit. Day off, man. And that entire <laughs> like there's an entire sector. I think it was in the second season where she dresses up and tries to flirt with Shuragane. Yeah, that's all going on. She's just like sending it really hard, and then she's at the end of it. She's like, I couldn't do it. I failed. But I'm yeah. <laughs> Please, justice for this lady. Let her have a day off. Let her have an entire day off. Have some baths. Just relax, please. Do not have to deal with cucky and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Give this woman a fucking holiday. Anyway, uh, I have a lot of love for. I have a lot of love for. Yeah, for her. I think she's fantastic. Um, no, but man, this is the thing. Is furthermore, on top of all of that, all the characters are incredibly individual and. Just talking about characterization and the dynamic between characters, uh, which we might be able to get into, and I'm sure you have something on this. I think that the balance between Kaguya and Shiragane is fantastic because their dynamic is when you initially start watching, you basically think they're the same person. Yeah. Like they're incredibly intelligent. They're both playing 4D underwater interdimensional chess with each other, uh, trying to get the other person to confess their love. And they're both, you know, Exactly, all you think they're exactly the same. They're so stupidly prideful and completely unable to communicate at all. And then once you sort of sit in for a while, you realize Shuragane is poor as fuck, man. Like he, he ain't going anywhere. He's, like, he's a delivery man and shit. Like he's not doing anything at all. He's really, really sharp, but he got there through hard work. Whereas like Kaguya is naturally talented, and it's that whole kind of nature versus nurture thing. In that is, is Kaguya like? Kaguya is naturally talented and gifted and comes from the family, has had the best education. She's still a hard worker, but you can tell she's more of a natural. Whereas Shiragane just got there through fucking hard work. And that's where the and then you get into the characters' backstories and their family situations and everything else. You start to see how the two characters delineate. But initially, you're given to believe they're both sort of two sides of the same coin, if you like. And it's really yeah. not the case at all. And that's fantastic characterization. It's really good pacing where you sort of begin to get into the background of the characters. You begin to understand where they're from, what they're into, what their personalities are like, and figure out that you know, they're different people. Different yes. People. And I really like yeah. that. No, I, I agree with that. I think, I think comparing the characters to where they started to where they are now is always very interesting. And I think with Kaguya you're Summer's... Ahead, you're, ahead, you're, you're ahead of the curve, dude. You know what happens. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead. I don't <laughs> want to know what goes on. Well, I won't be talking about it in this episode because I don't want to spoil it to people that have only watched the anime, but all I will say is that, like, that the best hasn't even come yet. Like, there's still genuinely way more better things that will be happening in the future of the series. It's genuinely good. I think the third season might be coming out either this year or next year as well, so hopefully you won't have to wait too long to watch it. Yeah, I hope so, too, man. I'm, I actually will get back into this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. It's that good. But I, um... I do, I do think that, especially for like the anime as well, it's really, like it's really good to see these characters' growth and where they come from. Because I think a lot of the characters start off as being somewhat unlikable, kind of like not the greatest, like the greatest of people or something. Like when they first get introduced, like Shiri, like you said, Shirogane and Kaguya seem very like kind of stuck up and condescending in a lot of ways. Like not what you said. I'm just like adding to it. But like obviously, the first time you see them is them trying to get each other to confess and not be willing to confess. I haven't believing that there's some kind of superiority you get from it or something. But over time, as you look at these characters more, you learn more about them and kind of understand more from where it's coming from. And in general, you start to learn that a lot of the kind of ideals of love they have is partly from kind of their own insecurities in a lot of ways as well, and just kind of of what they believe they have to do. Especially for Kaguya's character, who comes from like a whole very fucking elite family, she believes she has to kind of have she can't she believes that she can't confess to another person because she has to have some kind of power balance or something like she this needs to be some kind of superiority over each other there's obviously like the meta kind of jokes it makes about like the romance relationships at the very start of the series talking about how there's always some power imbalance in a relationship which we won't talk about that i'm not going to get into any controversial takes about that i think it's definitely exaggerated obvious of, on my part and i think it's part kind of acknowledging that but yeah I and think, I think um, what you could say that's not even slightly spicy 
uh, about this entire scenario is that if these two, the entire this is the entire reason for the show to exist. Don't get me wrong, but the be all and end all for me, at least on this one, I'm watching it, is that you need to fucking communicate in a relationship. I think the series. I definitely agree with that. I think the series, just in general, is kind of more about communications with those around you like in terms of like it's about the rom- romance but i think what makes it uh, like elevates kanye for me is that it, it isn't just focused on the romance and it starts being focused on being able to communicate with everyone around you and how these communications can help you in a lot of ways for kanye like with the fireworks especially mm-hmm. she obviously wanted to see the fireworks every with everyone like it's the kind of end of season one like event that happens but she tries to like kind of brush it off in that and it ends up causing her pain or something, but because her friends understand what she wants in that, or like they try and dig into it and understand what she wants, they're able to help her. And it's kind of about that lack of communication almost caused her like despair or like distress, but because of her friends who can communicate with her or know who she is and who pushed to communicate with her, they were able to help her and get her to see something they want, especially with Ishigami as well. Kind of his whole character arc and his whole misery descends from his inability to communicate with each other or something. Cause he doesn't want it. Yeah. He doesn't want to communicate, but like Shirigane helps him by reaching out and actually being there to help him. And I think it's, I think that's what elevates it in a lot of ways. It's not just about the romance between Shirigane and Kaguya and how they need to communicate with each other. It's about how all these characters, like the main cast, interact with each other and how this kind of social, like the high school fucking world works in regards to like popularity and fucking romance and just friendships in general. And I think that's what elevates it for me in that it's not just focused on the romance. I was going to, I was about to say, you'll notice I didn't yeah. say romantic relationships. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Everything you said is absolutely absolutely on point man the i think the central theme of this whole thing is just like fucking talk like yeah i be be honest be genuine with each other and don't like don't fuck around with this time's too short you haven't got enough time in the day like you know that entire um there's a section in, in a show that i remember quite clearly where they're like it's summer and they're all just like lying around in their rooms not doing anything yes yeah like, none of them can bring each other to text it's actually like, <laughs> real <laughs> it is but it's also really sad like <laughs> You've got these two people who are vibrant and young and beautiful and just they want to they want to hang out they want to have a good time and it's purely pride it's the whole no you need to tell me that you like me before i tell you that i like you. yeah and it's like dude if you just fucking if you fucking, just fucking say it like don't be fucking afraid bro. go out and ask a girl on a date fuck's sake do it you know, like that, that to me frustrates me so much. And and I was just like watching them both like lying there, you know, Kagi is sort of curled up in their blankets and just been like a catatonic state for three weeks. <laughs> they just stand there like you need to go outside and get vitamin D. It's just like, no. Yeah. And then, it's just like lying out there going, I go to work, I come back here, I lie on the fucking ground and I sweat my balls off. It's just like, people are fucking retarded. But you know, you know what the magic of it is, man, is that that is such a vibe yeah because yeah, it's way too real and i and i'm sure a whole bunch of people male and female we have been in these situations where we are just sitting there and we're bored and we want to go out and we want to have dynamic exciting adventures and we just can't bring ourselves to pick up a fucking phone and call someone and say hey Adam, i'm sorry to bother you but i just want to like can we can we go do something today can we go hang out can we just go on and yeah day? can we do something and we don't do that because we're like they're gonna be busy I don't want to sound needy. I don't want to sound like I'm a bitch. I don't want to be, you know, alone on someone else's life. I don't, you know, what's our friendship actually like? Am I pushing too hard? And all this dumb bullshit that goes on the back of your head, dude. And it's so real. It's so visceral. That's what makes it sad is that you look at that and go, that has been me. That might still be me. And I probably still will do that in the future. And it hurts. It really does hurt. And that's what, that, that is like just one tiny example. That's like literally a scene in the, well, yeah, no, it's of of the episodes, and you still watch that going. That hurts because that is too real, and that, I have so many moments like that in this show. But yeah, that's just an example of that whole thing of just pick up the phone and communicate. Like can you just guys, but that's the thing, dude. If they communicated, there wouldn't be a show. Yeah, there needs to be some drama, some excitement, some dynamic misunderstanding <laughs> for this entire thing to work. But. It's interesting in that Kaguya Summer pinballs between being a show about like the tension between two different characters and, and what they're running on and what's going on. And then it also touches on this whole idea of these are the consequences when you don't do this thing. So it gets it's fucking hilarious when they're not communicating because they're both playing 40 chess. On the other side, it's so sad that they're not. 
Yeah. Be hanging out and having such a good time and growing together as a best friends or, or couple or whatever the fuck it is. And that's fantastic. Going back to like a point I was making before, actually, I just wanted to go further for on this well. There's also the constant like repetition of like kind of the general kind of school body being represented as this kind of like vibe or something or like just this kind of massive culmination that kind of also doesn't res- like appreciate the hard work that a lot of the characters go through or like a lot of the fucking stuff that's behind the scenes and a lot of the characters in the main cast are able to see past that at least and help help each other like with um the one that i can think of very easily with is, is with Eno or Mika, how whatever you want to call her um is that um in general when she's like applying when she's applying for the present things people kind of dismiss her as being a bitch she's like too uptight and all that but ishigami who even says that he dislikes her a lot acknowledges the hard work that she puts in and kind of the general toxicity that is attacking her with like the almost bullying but like kind of not to that extreme level yet or anything and so he wants to step in and help and help her but still not let her win he lines it up though. That's the funny thing. Ishigami's like the silent ninja in the shadows, helping out, helping out a lass. You know. Yeah, yeah. He's like in there. We don't want to see her lose, lose that bad. So then, yeah, that entire fucking sequence is so magical, man. Yeah, yeah. So Shirogane obviously, like, obviously helps her, but while kind of like and like kind of going against her as well to be to still not ruin his own chance, but also to help her kind of focus and actually be able to say what she wants to say. And I think it's really, I think it's really good. It speaks a lot for all the characters in that, in regards to they're not like pull they're not like pulled into this kind of massive blob that is the school body that just forms their opinions based on what the rest of the school does or something they're able to look past it and obviously with Ishigami it's partly because he understands that kind of aspect as well with how he's a lot of his hard work is stuff that he doesn't want people to know about and he wants to remain independent of it because it would undermine the point of it Hiya Slucker as well is a good example of that because what we were saying before she puts in a lot of hard work that Kaguya doesn't very much appreciate at the start I will say like it doesn't and then um obviously Shirigane and Kaguya as well are pretty representative of that Shirigane puts in a lot of fucking hard work to get to where he is. Kaguya also puts up with a lot to get to where she is as well in, in general, but she is naturally talented, but that would obviously come with its own burdens and expectations for her family, which you see glimpses of in the anime. But um and it yeah, is it is further developed later on. But um it, it seems like they've written her off like a father barely says a word to her and she's like sitting there in a you know proper Japanese gown that she just came in there and said, Oh, you're here. Yeah, exactly. This lady a hug, please. Yeah. Like, she needs, she needs yeah. Yeah. So, and that's something that I genuinely like a lot about the main cast is that they're able to kind of help each other. Even Chica, who I say that I don't like much, does help a lot around, like, or does do her own thing like, a lot. And while I still don't like it too much, I do acknowledge that she does help a lot. She did help with getting evidence for Ishigami, and she is sometimes nice to Miku, but sometimes, especially to Margaret, seems like she just uses her to get someone that compliments her. <laughs> But um, I have expectations today that the orphan knows what he wants to do with Chica as well, and I'm sure she'll be great by the end as well. Lara is so amazing too because she just she adds she is like that water balloon at a party, you know. So anything is getting too serious or anything is getting too intense, she just sort of arrives and then fucks with things. Yeah, she's like definitely... that, that is her design. She's, there is the kind of comedy relief inside no, of something definitely. that's already fucking hilarious, and it's. It's so amazing how there's an expectation of this is the way it's going to be. This person's finally going to triumph and then enter stage left for Fujiwara and then just comes and fucks shit up. Yeah. Like I said, I, <laughs> becomes a- while I may not like her much as an actual person, like I still like her character and think that she's a fucking great comedic element and actually like makes a lot of the scenes way more hilarious than they would be without her. Yeah, I, I don't really know what's to hate, but also she does seem. I just kind think of she's incredibly fucking like, self-centered, and entitled. Yeah, basically, like it just infuriates me at points how like um, self-centered she can be. <laughs> I'm gonna throw in a mention. What, what are we talking about? I, I've kind of lost track of where we're going because I feel like we're on really good energy here. But I, was uh, like, what I, are we I, about? I was talking about like the general and it, like the kind of behind the scenes stuff that the characters do with like regards to like putting in effort and that and not being recognized but the main cast being able to recognize that and help each other in times even with Ishigami's like um test and that Kaguya helps him a lot with like the studies and that and she like over time as well in the manga it becomes more recognized by Kaguya that Ishigami's putting in effort to study and it's yeah, absolutely and it's very it's very good like I, I genuinely just love the main cast a lot and I think they really work off of each other well and there's a lot of good supporting cast characters but I think the main cast is definitely where the show excels in the terms of its character writing and I think it's fantastic in terms of character writing. It's genuinely just perfect. I think it's it's so unique as well. You you do have very different characters from very different necks of the woods, all interacting and bouncing off each other, and 
Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. I really, really think they've got a good cast. And let's be completely honest, the, the, the cast is what carries this. Yes. This would not work. This, this entire concept, while it is hilarious in and of its inception, is, is lacking. It would be lacking without the same kind of character development, the attention to detail that the writer put in. What's his name, by the way? Um, let me double check that. I always um, pronounce it wrong, I believe. It's Aka Akakashi. Akasha, Akasaka. Akasaka is it, yeah. Um, he's also, he's also a great writer. Like, I'm reading another series that he's written, which is also just as great, in my opinion. Like, it's genuinely just as entertaining. Like, and I, I think it shows that he's very good. And he's writing them both at the same time, like Kaguya and this other series. Other series? What's that about? Um... Without going too much into spoilers, it's about a guy who um, dies and gets reincarnated as his idol fan, as an idol that he's a fan of, um, as a as a child, and it's genuinely, genuinely really good. Like it's funny, but it's also really yeah. fucking greatly written as well. This guy is is a fantastic writer. Yeah, I mean, there's no getting around that. He's a really, really good writer. Um, okay, so what's what is it that? makes the comedy work so well in this show do you think i i i can say that very i i can say that there's a lot about that but in my opinion one of the things it, that it works fantastically in this series is its perfect ability to constantly like call back to previous elements and to keep like jokes running and long ongoing and also to kind of rehash jokes but also use it in like new ways as well like there is there are a lot of jokes that are like span across a bunch of episodes basically like there's some that are called back to as well especially in the manga there was like there was um, after i don't want to say any spoilers or anything obviously but after one event happened they did a bit where they kind of parodied previous chapters where they kind of just redid the structure and redid the jokes but it was fucking hilarious because of the way they did it um and in general there's a lot of chapters as well to kind of span like other things and like i remember uh, they didn't do this in the anime so it's hard to actually say but um i remember with the movie ticket at the start of the series in the manga there's actually a chapter of them going to the movies and it's fucking hilarious because they're playing 40 chess trying to figure out where the other person would seat where the other person would sit what seat number what seat number <laughs> they pick and it's going like and shirigane is kind of trying to signal to her so that she knows and they can sit with each other but then she does she misreads it and picks the wrong thing like as a row in front of him so they're just sitting like back like two rows apart just like watching the movie and it's like what well, is this better than nothing i guess <laughs> Um, which is, isn't in the anime, and I'll talk about more about like what the anime cuts out because I think that the anime does a good job, even though it does cut out things. But um, and I'll talk about why I think it does a good job with that later because I want to focus more on the comedy. But yeah, I think the biggest thing with the comedy is its continuity and how the characters also are consistent in terms of what they are in terms of the comedy as well. A lot of the characters have roles they play, like some of them are the straight men, some of them are kind of the exaggeration, exaggerated characters, like it's, it's particular Kaguya and Shiragai always exaggerate their expressions and, and and their emotions. And then, obviously, I think we said it briefly before, that Chika's just the agent of chaos, where she just comes in and fucking ruins things all the time, and Shigami's kind of the depressed fucking straight man. And I think just there's a lot of continuity. I think that's genuinely the best way to word it. Continuity is the best thing about this comedy. The, the fact that you can keep riffing on the same kind of subjects, the same kinds of jokes, and they're still fresh and they're still funny. Yes, yeah. And all just like even like making callbacks to previous jokes and like, and just the consistency. There's a, it becomes even more clear later on in the manga how much fucking consistency there is between like characters interacting with each other and referencing previous events. There are genuinely some chapters that won't work with that previous chapters being read. <laughs> really yeah it's man you need to send me a copy of this. it's genuinely fantastic i have all the english volumes on my shelf like it's it's one of the first series in a very long time that i pre like i bought all of the books for without it being finished because i trust it enough that it will actually be good and even if it's not good i'm still happy to have it <laughs> yeah what do you what do you, what do you think of that comedy though you could probably give a more concise definition than i did just it's definitely not concise man I, I would say it's just different you you and i appreciate different things and you're also operating in that outside sphere of the manga that exists yes, and you yeah. know what's going on no, it's not or actually from the anime perspective also right? yeah it's from i was going to actually just say from the anime perspective the voice actors as well are partly of what the comedy is their voice actors are fucking perfect <laughs> Like we said with the narrator, a lot of like what works is the narrator's fucking energy put into it. A lot of the characters put in a lot of energy into the voice work as well and make and enhance the comedy by like a thousand. I, I agree with that. I was I was gonna get into the narrator actually it was my first point. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole thing is just like it's a death battle, it's a battle to the death mm -hmm. it's so serious, you know. Dude, we were talking about fighting games earlier, right? But it is like that in this game. It's like, you know, different... And they have a fighting game rounds. joke at some point in the anime where, like, um, it's got, like, health sure. bars. Yeah. <laughs> I think... 
I'm pretty sure it does. I'm I can't remember when it. No, no, no. There is. No, no, this is in the second season. Yeah, um, yeah. Fucking. He's trying to get her to take a hand off her face because she's got that yeah, yeah, technique yeah. going on, and then she's losing health, but then she's putting it back on, and he's sort of losing. His yeah, there is an entire like fighting two D sequence in there, uh, where she's yeah because her health runs out, then mm -hmm. she faints, and then wakes up in the doctors and starts screaming autistically that she must have a heart condition because she can't just be passing out because of feelings. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's an entire thing in the second season. I remember this. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I <laughs> ah, dude, it is Street Fighter. But um, it is it is a lot like that. You have the narrator does commentate it like it's a just back and forth volley. It's a fight. It's a war to the death. And it is called Love is War. There is some accuracy to that. I think that a huge amount of the comedy just comes from you caught in these situations, the stuff going on. And then, as with a lot of comedy generally, what makes it funny is that it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is gonna, you might get a little real, a little deep here. But a, a lot of what makes comedy funny is that it is accurately a vibe. It, it, was, it is a certified vibe. You do hit it in there and go, this is a real thing. This is going on. I know this. I resonate with this. It's funny. And part of the reason it's funny is it's not happening to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, a huge amount of what they go through, all the dumb bullshit. It's funny because it's framed in such a way that we understand, that we get it, we know what's going on. It's not esoteric, weird, off-the-shelf kind of shit. Although there is like some stuff which is just completely hilarious. Uh, and a lot of comedy also comes from subverting audience expectations. Yeah. Uh, this show is a tremendous tease for everything. You, you literally, it would take maybe a conversation of like three sentences for... Shiragane and Kaguya to get together. <laughs> Three sentences, man. Now, you know, you may, it probably happens in the manga. You probably know what's going on. I reckon it would take like three sentences to get this shit sorted out properly. But because they cannot bring each other to do it, it's like they're bouncing off each other in such a way. Yeah. Like this doesn't work out. It's so much. It's like I said before, it's just like, oh, the characters are so fucking just like wrapped up in their own like insecurities and fucking perceptions on how like they have to fucking work as like characters as did they just fuck each other a lot over a lot. A lot of a lot of the like development is hindered by themselves and it's hilarious because it's very it's self-destructive in a lot of ways, but it's done very well. <laughs> That's just it. You think that because they've got it all thought out, it's going to work. Like, Kaguya has rigged up the entire student council room to have, like, you know, um, <laughs> contingency plans for if they need yeah. to knock the president out. They just give him decaf and then he passes out because he needs X amount of coffee to work per day. Um, her maid comes in and plants stuff around the house and they have that huge <laughs> around the school. They have that huge cake and then she just brings in one slice, but she brought an entire fucking wedding cake in. Yeah, purely to try and shot shot. It's fucking. It's it is the subversion of expectation while still keeping it real. Yeah, and we have all been awkward teenagers at one point trying to confess to our crush in the Japanese fashion and never getting away with it because we're too caught up in our own dumb bullshit in our heads. She's not going to like me. She's going to think badly of me. Her friends are going to talk poorly about me. It's going to ruin the friendship. None of this is going to work. Yeah, exactly. Those are all the worst possible, like, ground zero scenarios for this. And what the show does so well is it picks up all of these insecurities, cranks them up to 11, and then just plays these two people off each other in the most ridiculous way possible. And it's accurate because they're both in exactly the same boat. They both want exactly the same shit. But they can't fucking bring themselves to do it because teenage insecurity, hormones, and everything else mixed up within it is ridiculous. Yeah. We have been that guy or girl. I'm assuming we might have three female listeners on this pod. Oh, um, actually. We have people who sit there and who plan out everything. It's like, I'm elegantly going to get this person to do this, this, this. I'll say this, and it's going to work out this way. Yeah, right? definitely. And then, so we all think that's going to work perfectly. And then even when, when it starts to work that way, you're like, oh shit, oh shit, it's going to work. And then everyone has a Fujiwara kick the fucking door down. It's either your mate or one of her mates or whatever the case is being. And just completely kills the magic. Just rolls in and starts throwing water balloons everywhere, drawing on people's faces, just being generally whatever. They're just diffusing the entire situation. And they're completely oblivious. They have no, yeah. no idea what's going on. They don't give a shit, but you know, they realize that this entire plan you've been devising for a week is now down to shitter. Because they just turned up at the most inopportune time. And it also shows off the futility of planning everything out in advance. You just cannot like allow for everything to happen the way you want it to. Both Kaguya and Shiragane learn this on a regular basis. And it's interesting, in the anime at least, 
how they play it up. The harder they try to control shit, the less they, the more likely they are to lose. Yeah. If the play, it's actually funny. The plan is a little bit loose and it's open to improvisation. They're okay. If it's like hardline, this, 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 this is going to work. And the more people they involve, the more likely it is to get fucked. And I'm not sure if that's just a vibe or if that's just a thing that the writer has done intentionally, but it just, and I could just be picking this up from a different angle, but that's how it feels to me. The harder you try to control it, the less control you have. Yeah, I, th- I think I think I think that's pretty accurate, especially with these characters. The more they think out, the more they overthink things, the more they just end up damaging themselves, really. And do you know what's like amazing about this? I'll just finish off this entire point. The most heartwarming parts come from when they're not thinking. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. um, Shiragane at the end of season one like takes Kagi out to see the fireworks, and he's like this super cool, super like smooth shonen protagonist. Still, you know, he's he's like the. He's like the um, he's like the shujo, the shojo uh, protagonist that he was in the earlier episodes. You know, the super smooth, super cool, super mm-hmm. sick dude. So it comes in out of nowhere, and it's only because he's running purely off instinct that it's awesome. And like we just for the moment, you're just like he's doing it. He's not just a hopeless virgin caught up in his own head. He's got game, <laughs> but it's because he's not thinking about it. You know, it's like he's he's not even thinking about it. He's just like I want to take my friend to see the fireworks. We're getting her to see the fireworks. I'm not going to think about anything else. It's not about me anymore. It's about her. Yeah, and just the fucking way he sends it there, and like all pre- the faces pressed up against the fucking fire, like, the glass and shit. And is it the entire time like Kagi is just looking at Shiragane instead? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. Man, it's power. It's power. It's amazing. It's got such energy to it. It is a vibe. And fuck, it's like you just that is it. There, it is just not. It is just like the the second you take the hands off the wheel and just sort of let it happen. It works out better for you. The more you overthink it, the less likely it is going to happen. Yeah, just, it's also like that moment where they're watching the stars, which always makes me laugh. Like we're at the top on the rooftops, and then like Shiragane yeah. is not thinking at all, but Kage is still playing forty chess. But it, like he's just completely oblivious to anything she's trying because <laughs> he's just watching the stars, and then he just yeah. he completely embarrasses her because she's not prepared for him to be so bored. And he's just trying to watch the stars with her, and it's fucking hilarious. That chapter that episode makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> oh, dude, it's amazing. Um, another one is where yeah, it's. Oh, dude, it, yeah, it just keeps happening and happening. I hope the third and fourth seasons are pretty good adaptations of the manga because I really want to see these guys. I definitely hope so as well. I definitely hope so as well. I was going to say as well, I think the soundtrack also enhances it because there's a lot of tracks in it that are just fucking overly intense for no reason. And just like... Just, D- yeah. Because it's just like a lot of a lot of the design for this is just as if it's a battle shown in a lot of ways. So it's just like this intense death note mind game s stuff where it's just got intense music playing when they're just trying to figure out how to fucking get the other person to tell them that they like them and it's hilariously done Dude, I, it's yeah. like the scoreboard uh, I was, as well i was I, I got real there for a second but we were talking about the comedy and that is a huge part of yeah. it it's like what what am i some kind of hero and some sort of you know shonen protagonist or, you know, great shonen show or you know some kind of clueless loser has no idea what he's talking about and now it is like yes yeah <laughs> Pretty much, there's a, there is a level of fourth wall drawing there. But even just how like, the narrator is able to blow very small situation. The story does this, but the narrator is perfect. He's just the perfect setting for it, where you blow up this most innocuous situation to be life or death. Done. Like it just happens. It's amazing, man. Like the the exaggeration, and I guess a lot of my humor comes from being ridiculously over the top as well. Yeah. So I really I really vibe with this show because it is that. It is just over the top bullshit. Yes, on a regular basis, and I love it. I love it so much. The comedy is fantastic. It is the corner. It is the cornerstone of the show. I think it's fucking funny. But when you when you push that comedy a little too far, and you actually start getting real, and you start deconstructing a little bit, it gets sad, and it also gets really wholesome. Yes, yeah, it definitely it's does. That perfect tripartite of like a good a good drama, bro. That's right. Yeah, there are some uh, there are some chapters in the later like manga that like. Me and a friend will talk about it a lot where it will start the chapter laughing and then like a page later it'll just get depressing. Like and the author is very good at managing tone. Like it doesn't feel like you're getting whiplash from jumping back and forth between tone. It's just a natural progression between tone. And I think that's the most commendable thing about it is that the author can make such funny moments, but it can also make some really good heartfelt and like beautiful moments as well. Just it goes to say a lot about his skill as a writer. And I genuinely just respect him a lot in terms of what he's written. I have an insane amount of respect for him, dude. Another thing I would just point out, um, this is on a structural level from a writing perspective for the anime, how each episode has like might have three different chapters in it. Yeah. And they're sort of these kind of really funny one-shot battle type things. Again, it's like rounds in a game of Tekken or Street Fighter, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you think about it, like the entire structure of one episode, by the way, might be two or three different little vignettes of like everyone hanging out and doing stuff. And yes, they all have progression. Yes, they all follow one from each other. 
but it is funny. It's kind of like rounds in a fighting game. At the end of it, it's Shiragani wins, Kaguya wins uh, a draw. Uh, yeah. Shiragani loses, Kaguya loses, Fujiwara loses. Uh, just speaking of, one of my favorite episodes in the entire, I think it was the first or second season, which is uh, just Fujiwara going into a ramen shop and then <laughs> eating ramen. And there's like that red no dude, one of my favorite one of my like most fuck yes moments in this entire show was when there was that one guy who was like chilling out and just eating ramen and like he then Fujiwara comes in and then just does all this different stuff and it's like they get a it is exactly the same genre, but it's radically different. It's almost like now it's turned it into a cooking show where Fujiwara is enjoying the ramen a bit better than this absolutely pristine ramen enjoyer who's only like the five best in Tokyo type shit. And then <laughs> you're talking about continuous like brick jokes man the best one for me was when like the cab driver who yeah. picks them all up and then drives them is like one of the five ramen masters of tokyo <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like there's this random episode that makes no sense they're just sitting in a ramen shop and like this one guy's getting uber jealous and then suddenly thinks fujiwara is a fucking ramen master of yeah. eating like ramen appreciated ramen because she eats ramen a certain way and then he's like, I must go back and study. And there's like, he's just flash of like five of the ramen masters of Tokyo. And then it's like, it's, get in the cab. But it's like, it's one like massive beefy dude. And you're like, finally, they got something. They're going to go see the fireworks. And then you see underneath, it's like one of the five ramen masters. Yeah. It's like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's so good. I'm getting fired up fucking thinking about it. But it's just like the ramen master of Tokyo has approached. And it's like, you kind of feel like there's a running joke there where the skinny, like, bespectacled fucking ramen master total is mates about Fujiwara. This guy sees Fujiwara and he's like, we need to get out of the fireworks. Yeah. And that guy puts it, dude, and it's the smallest, most like amazing moments in the show. I fucking swear. It's like when. They just like put the foot down. It's like it's fine. No one's on the roads. And just like stomps on it because he's so emotionally invested in just getting Kaguya to see the fireworks with his yeah. friends. I think. Oh, I think so there's fucking good. I think there's like three or four ramen chapters in the whole manga where they like talk about the fucking ramen. Oh, dude, those things. guys come back. Yeah. Are there more ramen? Masters? Yeah. Bro, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like gym. It's like um, it's like gym trainers. Fucking, it's like the, the guys who run the gyms in a Pokemon. I swear to God, those are guys. Like, Dude, it is amazing. I fucking dude, and okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting off track. I'm getting really excited about ramen and um the guy, the taxi driver ramen guy. But we're talking about the comedy, and then we're moving over into yeah, framing. So structure, structure wise, I think this works really well as a series of tiny vignettes that all kind of came together and like evolve into their own thing, their own creature. It's there's so much going on there. It's absolutely fucking mad, and I love it so much. Yes. Yeah, and there's a continuity with the comedy and stuff you're talking about, but also just like each, at least for the anime episodes. Um, if you're a manga reader, read the manga for sure. I think there's more of it, so you should definitely read the manga. But if you're an anime enjoyer like myself, or just it's easy to get through the manga, the anime there, um, you will sit there and work your way through each individual episode. And each individual episode can be like two, three, maybe even four parts of a different sort of setup. And I will say this as much as well, dude. While we're praising this guy, while we're sucking his dick about how fucking good he's at story, like his ability to build sexual tension is <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I had never considered that one. <laughs> no, dude. But honestly, like in terms of literally, like you, I, I have. We won't get too deep here about this, but like in terms of romance and stuff, you know, there's a whole sort of almost kiss type moments you have in every show, and it's cute and adorable and everything else you never like i don't know about you but i've never seen like an anime or even a show generally wherein i want two people to kiss so badly like the ability to build dynamic tension um in the smallest amount of stuff like even just you know like kaguya uh or shirigane like you know grabbing around the shoulders and holding it close and shit when watching the moon and stars like you're talking about earlier no and, like, she gets okay, i got what you mean crazy. The tension building is absolutely insane because, like, all of the thoughts, all of the, everything else, you know, these guys are like, insanely into each other. They're barricading each other off from getting anywhere with the entire process. But the ability to build tension between them over the smallest things, like hand touches, or like, it's literally touching their lips, like that moment when she pulls him into it, like her bed, and then he literally just like touches her lips, and that's it. And like yeah. she passes out, because it's feverish, and all of her fucking shields are down. And then like she just does it back to him. It's like ah. Dude, it's so fucking cute. But like that ability to build that insane amounts of tension between those two characters, like romantically and even just physically, is it's it's second to none, son. It's so good. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I it is uh, I feel like having watched a lot of rom com animes, I feel like there's a lot of fucking animes where I want characters to kiss, but Kangu is definitely one of the strongest ones where I definitely it, it is 
genuinely one of the series where watching it and reading it, I was always just on the edge of my seat wanting them to actually get together. But it's yeah. it's still fun. But you also you realize if that if that happens if that happens you don't have a show. You know, like so much of it is just if they dude, this entire show, I swear, is just predicated on them not getting together. Like the 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 the, the writer is gonna continue to fuck with everybody and he's gonna keep searching out attention and there's never gonna be a chance. It's like the they will not learn the Aesop of like learning how to get together and actually communicate as a couple because there's no show if there isn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going to happen. So I, I really appreciate the way he teases that attention, man. Just continue to play with it and continue to keep it fresh like it's mad. I'm really about that. Yeah, he's good at that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So before, before we wrap up, I'll probably just talk about the manga and like the anime compared to like it being adapted. I Please do, man. Yeah, you run it, run it. Cause um so yeah I said at the start that I think that the manga is personally like when I first read it I thought it'd be pretty hard to adapt and pretty much almost impossible in a lot of ways I still like I still think that I that I was accurate in thinking that because to put it simply I think the anime ends at chapter forty six of the manga and it's only twelve episodes so and like chapter forty six is around when the fireworks stuff starts happening so okay. for, so for Kaguya the manga, a lot of it is filled with chapters that are comedic, and there are a lot of development chapters in between, and the thing that's great about it is that a lot of comedic chapters are later referenced later on, and they kind of make it more serious in a lot of ways. Like, So there is some gag chapters that are actually incredibly relevant to a character's growth later on in the series, and it's amazing that he keeps pulling this off. And, um, and so it's in a lot of ways it's hard to know what you can and can't skip even in terms of like the anime right now they've skipped some chapters that like later on in the series they won't be able to do an episode on because they would have to reference it or do it later on but it's, it feels a bit hard to do it but um i think that the anime does a good job of figuring out what is important to skip and what isn't important like and what what can like so what can be and what can't be skipped and it's very hard to know that and i just have to emphasize that because Akasaka Akasaka is a fucking madman in terms of what he calls back to. Like he's, it's unpredictable. There are some chapters that people never thought they'd see mentioned again, but then end up like becoming incredibly relevant to a character's growth later on. And it's astounding that it happens and that he can do it. And so when I read it, I was like, I don't genuinely think they can make a twelve episode anime of this and it being satisfying because there's no real good endpoint for like around chapter twenty or thirty, which is what they'd get up to if they adapted every chapter. But in my opinion, the series does a good job of picking and choosing what to adapt and in terms and and in terms of what it does adapt as well it makes up for what it skips over as well and a lot of the manga fans as well agree that in terms of what is skipped over they can see why it's skipped over and in terms of what is picked is important enough that you can survive off of it later on there are definitely some points in the future of the series that they won't be able to adapt because they've skipped a chapter and it'll be too hard to but i have a lot of faith that they'll continue to do a good job with it and i i'm just genuinely impressed it's very rare for me to it's very rare for me to give a 10 to both the manga and the anime in terms of what I like in terms of what, what I'm watching and reading. The only ever time that is the only time that has ever happened besides with Kaguya Sama for me is with Monster in terms of me thinking that the manga and anime are both as perfect as each other. But Kagi is also on there for me now where I think that the anime is just fucking a complete blast to watch and makes up for all the content that it does skip by just going all in in terms of the content that it is adapting and also knowing what it should adapt and I have a lot of praise for the series for that because it's not an easy series to adapt at all. No, it's really not, man. I'm um, even just watching the anime; it is absolutely fucking breathtaking. Mm-hmm. It's based on a fucking manga, which has a huge amount of different variation going on in the background. You got a huge amount of different little guy chapters, weird little sort of side stories, stuff going on, and the management can like. Can, this is the thing about like anime and manga adaptations: it's really what's filler, what's not. What can we get into a publishable series that's going to do well? Uh, and the fact that they managed to get that and then condense it down into this liquid grade, like romantic, romantic comedy heroine that we're all in, ingesting directly into our veins right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's fantastic, and I could not, I could not recommend it more highly. And you recommended this one, so yeah, you know, I, I, I would like to say thank you to Sean for pushing me through onto the series. I'm going to follow it with great interest from now on. Yes, yes, please do. Season three will be really good. I can. I'm, I'm keen. So- I'm really keen, man. I'm really keen. That was a fucking sick pod. I'm really about it. I think that we should jump onto my recommendation and then get the fuck out of here because I'd imagine yeah. there's something else to do. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you uh, anymore. Okay, <laughs> <thanks>. <laughs> ah, it just got real. It got raw right there. <laughs> so we're getting we're getting here. 2021, here we come, all right? More of this to come. Um, okay, so um, our, our, our recommendation for next week is a movie, 
it's a Guy Ritchie movie, as a matter of fact. Oh, God. And it's called The Gentleman with Matthew McConaughey. Interesting. Uh, so that's – you said before that I need Prime to watch that, right? Uh, you will find that on Prime. You can probably also get it from other places. I would imagine YouTube does rentals and shit. But, yeah, it's Prime. Yeah. Uh, so The Gentleman by Guy Ritchie. It's a Guy Ritchie film. I really, really, really enjoy this. It's one of my favorite movies right now. So I hope that you'll be able to watch it and enjoy it. It's not Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a different kind of genre. It's a different kind of vibe. I've been on a Guy Ritchie stretch lately, and I really hope you can watch this and enjoy it because it's all about marijuana. It's all right. pretty funny. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, peace out all. Thank you very much for tuning into this episode. This, uh, this is extra long. I really can't tell how long this has been. But thank you all for coming back. We are coming back. We are coming back bigger and better than ever. Sean, do you have anything you would like to say to the audience before we finish up? No. Roggy, <laughs> peace out all. Happy Valentine's Day and look after yourselves.